Let's pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Hello again. So today we're going to read from Isaiah 58, 6 through 12. Is not this the fast that I choose, to loose the bonds of, the, of wickedness, to undo the straps of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry and bring the homeless poor into your house, when you see the naked to cover him? and not to hide yourself from your own flesh. Then shall your light break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up speedily. Your righteousness shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be your rear guard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry, and he will say, Here I am. If you take away the yoke from your midst, the pointing of the finger, and speaking wickedness, if you pour yourself out for the hungry and satisfy the desire of the afflicted, then shall your light rise in the darkness, and your gloom be as the noonday. And as the Lord will guide you continually, and satisfy your desire in the scorched places, and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters do not fail. And your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt, and you, and you, you shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to dwell in. Is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, missed you guys. Been a crazy couple of weeks here. So, on location again. Here we are. Um, and that I, and I can't remember that all my sermons and stuff start to run together because I'm, I'm doing sermons at church and I'm doing sermons with you guys and sometimes they're not the same and sometimes they are and I can't remember which ones so if somewhere in the last month or two I know I've read this passage somewhere but I don't know where but it doesn't get old and you can always get something from every piece of scripture every time that you read one right but I was thinking about um, I was thinking about this this week and um I was trying to think of like, you know, I think we all inherently know that it's good to do good for other people, right? Just because. Um, and it's like that's scriptural somehow, but I think it's not necessarily in one particular place. I think it's a lot of different places put together. But this passage here from Isaiah, I think, does a really good job of it because. It talks about fasting, right? And I think a lot of people, you know, right, think about fasting, especially from a spiritual sense, as a time to, um, you know, kind of do away with yourself or do away with your own pleasures and desires. And, and it has to do, you know, a lot of times with food and that kind of thing. But, um, and, but in order to, to have a more spiritual experience, because you know it, it talks about fasting in different parts of scripture and and how people will fast and and have this this you know spiritual connection with god and and all this but isaiah i think it you know has a it's not a different twist or a different take on it but he actually has the true meaning of what it means for the fast and, and a fasting is it's it's really not neglecting yourself to achieve a goal it's not it's going out of your way to reach out to other people with what they might need their needs and and just you know just being there to help people um and it's 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 different than you know we've, we've got this thing that people talk about the golden rule do unto others as you would have them do unto you it's a little bit off the golden rule is not too accurate. Um, what Isaiah is talking about is, is is something that goes 
beyond that because if I'm doing other unto others as, as I would want them to do unto me, okay, that's great, but you know, what if what I desire or, or my needs or something like that are not what somebody else would want or need? Then if I'm doing unto others as I would want them to do unto me, well, what if they're, you know, things that they need to be done unto, what if, what if things that they need are at a completely different level or a completely different thing, or right? You're, then you're missing the mark. Well, what Isaiah is talking about, he's not talking about trying to, to, to put a gauge on something. He's simply saying, help people. Help people to the extent of where they need help and how they need to be helped. Just period. Not thinking about yourself or what you're going to gain or, or anything, you know, and he's even saying in, in this passage, kind of go beyond yourself. He, he's even talking about, about, you know, one, one passage in there is, uh, you know, if you have some bread to share your bread with, with the other person. So I think we might have talked about that before. You know, if you're sharing your bread, it doesn't mean you're going without. It actually means you have and you're actually having some with somebody else. You know, that goes a lot of times beyond the, the, the way that people like to think about a fast. And 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 it was actually uh, lived out this week. I saw, I, I heard about it. I didn't physically see it, but I heard about it. And I'm going to try to talk about it. This uh, thing about being on location, the tree just fell. <laughs> Who knew? But here's here's the thing: is the uh, my mom and dad this week um, or this past week? They they have their water that comes to their house. They're not on a well, but the water they have, they're sitting so by on on a hill that it takes a long time for the water to to come from the, from the town and and stuff like that and where they're sitting, they actually have to have a pump, like a well pump, to actually pump enough water pressure up to their house, along with the pressure coming from the town. Well, they live, you know, back up in up on the side of a mountain, and there's some farms and stuff below, and they have a, when they ran the, the town water, and they were running the water up to their house, there's a, a guy below them has got a farm, and he needed to have a spigot down where his farm is, to help water cows and stuff like that, just to have a source of water down there because he didn't have one. So they said, okay, it's fine. Go ahead, we're having this water come up through here. Go ahead and hook it up. Well, it's past, you know, in, in the, over the winter, it's been raining a lot and stuff like that, and the cows kind of got down there and stomped on it and broke the spigot off, so they had a big water leak. Well, so the water was leaking out, and they lost water at their house. And when that happened, basically probably what happened is that pump that they had, um, burn up you know because it's just it's pumping nothing you know, it's trying to pump and trying to pump but there wasn't any water pressure so it probably just burnt the pump out and and they were with you know didn't have water for or actually for a few days but one of the cool things that happened was their neighbors got together and came out there to help them. and there's you know a few people working on it my you know mom dad they were working on it and uh there was a guy down the street they call him jonesy and uh he came up there and helped him. He said, "You know what? I know how to fix this thing. Um, you know, let me let me work on. It. I'll get some parts and stuff like that, and we'll get it put back together." So they went out. They got a new pump. Jones went and they, they got some you know some electrical gear and stuff like that that was needed. And uh, you know he got back up there and, and they were uh, you know because Jones was working during the week and um, they got back. Uh, finally got back over there to, to help him out when he could, you know, and he's taking time off work and after work and all this stuff. And he finally got everything wired up and he got the pump back in there, water was back on, and they got finally got water back to the house. And uh, Mom and Dad was trying to, you know, say, hey, look, here's you some money. Here's your, here's your gift card to go out to eat or something like that. And uh, he said, no. He said, I don't want you to pay me. And they said, you know, you know, at least let us, you know, we need to pay you something because you, you know, you helped us out and all that stuff. And he said, no. He said, we're neighbors. And, you know, hang on a minute. Part of the job of being a neighbor is looking out for each other. 
and you know I don't you you know you're not going to pay me. Good job, John. I remember growing up, these uh, these people lived beside of us, and uh, they were having a hard time mowing the yard and stuff like that. And um, you know, I remember my dad told me he said, you know, when you're mowing the yard, go over there and, and mow their yard too because they're having a hard time getting around and stuff like that. Didn't think anything about it. Just went and mowed their yard. Made this big bank that they couldn't get a lawnmower up and down. So went and did it because I was able to do it. Wasn't expecting any kind of pay or anything like that. We just went and did it because we was looking out for each other. That is what Isaiah means when he talks about a fast. It's about going out and reaching out to each other and where they need to be reached not doing unto others as you would have them do unto you it's doing unto others as they need the help to be done unto is as they need the things to be done not not for any kind of compensation or anything else way back when we called it just being neighborly and the cool thing is as we see all this stuff going on in the world today and everybody says oh this is awful and it's getting worse and all this stuff you know what it's still happening in places and that what, that's what I think God talks about as even though everything sometimes seems like it's, you know, going to hell in a handbasket, he says, I'm going to still leave a remnant. There's still going to be a remnant out there of what it means to, to, do, to, to live like we're supposed to live. To, to reach out to others like we're supposed to reach out to others and, and to find that essence of everything like what Jesus talked about the greatest commandment of all of them is to love each other and that's the essence of what it means to fast a fast is something that comes through love of each other not through anything else but just purely that and when you see that happen, it doesn't mean you're a perfect person or anything else. There can be a lot of imperfect people out there in the world that just simply want to reach out and do what they feel is the right thing to do. So in this world, when you think everything's falling apart, hold on to that true fast and find that love that you or they're going to look for it and aspire to, to find that love in the world that you can have examples to live up to. And... Uh, and truly try to understand that, you know, God is in the world. No matter what we think the world is turning into, God is here and he's strong and he will never leave our side. Let's pray. Thank you, dear Lord, for everything. Thank you for loving us and thank you for letting us love each other. Thank you so much for your son and for everything you do for us each and every day. In the precious name of Christ, we pray. Amen.